professor abdul wahid choudhury sir i'd like to ask professor m atharadi sir to say something about professor abdul wahid choudhury and start the program sir atharadi sir uh, good evening everybody this is really a great occasion amader ei ecg study group er ei program er online program er ajke eta bodha fifth program but amar kache mone hocche today's program is somewhat exceptional ei rokom unique faculties er collection really ei jabot amader kono program hoyni ami really happy to introduce amader ei amara screen e jara derke dekhte pacchi amar mone hocche amader kauke introduce kore dewar dorkar nei but amader onek participant ache jara notun ebong tara hocche really very much new in this field of the cardiology tader ke introduce kore dewar jonno ami boli je amader screen e jader ke dekha jacche tar bhitore shobar age i am happy to acknowledge my professor professor shufi arhaman madam amader screen e dekha jacchen amader legendary interventional cardiologist bangladesh bangladesh e unake shobai chenen ar ki amader dear participant professor shufi arhaman achen ei jagate achen amader professor abdullal shafi mujumdar sir jini amader ekhi rokomer uni legendary unio bangladesh er one of the great teacher amader shufi arhaman madam er moddhe great teacher amader professor abdullal shafi mujumdar sir ebong oi rokomi ara ekjon teacher ei moddhe ami screen e dekhte pacchen amader professor নজরুল ইসলাম স্যার তিনিও আছেন এই জায়গাতে এবং আরো ইন্ট্রোডিউস করে দিই আমাদের এই দেশের ভিতর থেকে আছে যেমন আমাদের প্রফেসর আবু আজম সরি এম জি আজম সরি আজম এম জি আজম যিনি যিনি আমাদের ভেরি লিডিং ইন্টারভেনশনাল কার্ডিওলজিস্ট এই মুহূর্তে আমাদের ফিল্ডে আব্দুল্লাহ তামিল উনি একজন ইলেকট্রোফিজিওলজিস্ট এবং কার্ডিওলজিস্ট এবং আমাদের প্রফেসর মোহসিন হোসেন উনি আমাদের নাম করা একজন ইলেকট্রোফিজিওলজিস্ট এই জায়গাতে আমাদের মায়মন সিং এর ডক্টর গোবিন্দ পাল ভেরি মাস একাডেমিক একজন কার্ডিওলজিস্ট উনিও এই ফিল্ডে দেখতে পাচ্ছিল নাকি আমাদের মোহাম্মদুল্লাহ ফিরোজ ভেরি মাস ট্যালেন্টেড এবং একাডেমিক একজন কার্ডিওলজিস্ট উনাকেও স্ক্রিনে দেখা যাচ্ছে আর আমি সবাইকে আর একটু পরিচয় করে দিই আমাদের রফিক স্যার হয়তো বা চিনবেন কিনা জানি না স্যার স্ক্রিনে দেখা যাচ্ছে ডক্টর প্রফেসর অরুণ মাসকি হি ইজ फ्रॉम নেপাল ডক্টর অরুণ মাসকি এই জায়গায় আছেন স্যার फ्रॉम নেপাল আর অরুণ মাসকি উনি আমাদের প্রফেসর রফিক আহমেদ স্যার তো যার কথা হয়তো বা তুমি অনেক শুনে থাকবে আমাদের এই জায়গাতে আরো আছেন আমাদের ডক্টর এ কে মনোরল ইসলাম যার কথা না বললেই না যে সে যেমনি একজন ট্যালেন্টেড যেমনি একজন একাডেমিক এবং যেমনি একজন মানে ক্লিনিক্যাল ক্লিনিক্যালি অল টাইপস এর মানে ট্যালেন্টেড একজন ফিজিশিয়ান আরো আছেন আমাদের প্রফেসর মাহবুব রহমান যিনি আমাদের মানে অত্যন্ত রিয়েলি তার কথা বলতেই হয় যে আমাদের প্রত্যেকটা একাডেমিক প্রোগ্রামে অ্যাক্টিভলি পার্টিসিপেট করে আমাদের প্রফেসর মাহবুব রহমান আর একজন আছেন আমাদের প্রফেসর খালিকুজ্জামান তা আমি নামগুলো বললাম হচ্ছে আমাদের যারা পার্টিসিপেন্ট আছে প্রায় nearly 200 percent facebook ebong ekhane dekhen taderke purichoy kore dewar jonno amader ei somosto legendary ei somosto faculties er collection er ekta ekta screen e very much unusual ar ajker program ta amar mone je ei karonei beshi unusual je amader ajker speaker hocchen professor abdul wahid choudhury abdul wahid choudhury somporke ektu bola lage amader participants der jonnoi bolli je amader somoshomoy kale bangladesh er real teacher real examiner shobar priyo teacher এবং উনি একজন আদর্শ টিচার যিনি অলরেডি প্রুভ করেছেন যে হি ইজ ওয়ান অফ দ্য গ্রেট টিচার অফ দিস কান্ট্রি সে হচ্ছে আমাদের প্রফেসর আব্দুল ওয়াদ চৌধুরী এজ এ টিচার মানে প্রিয় টিচার শিক্ষক বলতে যা বোঝায় সেই হচ্ছেন প্রফেসর আব্দুল চৌধুরী এবং তার কোয়ালিটি হচ্ছে যে হি নোজ হোয়াট টু টিচ এন্ড হাউ টু টিচ এন্ড হোয়েন ইন হুইচ ওয়ে হাউ টু টিচ দিস ইজ দ্য ইউনিক কোয়ালিটিস অফ দ্য প্রফেসর আব্দুল ওয়াদ চৌধুরী তার জন্য আজকে আমাদের ডিফিকাল্ট টপিক সেটা হচ্ছে ইসিজ অফ দ্য ইসকেমিক হার্ট ডিজিজ যেটা নাকি সে খুব পছন্দ করে আমার মধ্যে তার প্রোগ্রামটা আমরা কিছুক্ষণ পরে এনজয় করা শুরু করব প্রফেসর আব্দুল ওয়াদুদ চৌধুরী আর রফিক আহমেদ স্যার এর কথা তো আমি বলছি আমার মনে ডিয়ার পার্টিসিপেন্ট কে যে আমাদের মাসখানে আরেকজন আছে আমাদের প্রোগ্রামের স্যার তিনটা অংশ ওয়াদুদ চৌধুরীর পরে কিন্তু আমাদের প্রফেসর রফিক আহমেদ চৌধুরী যেটা হচ্ছে ওয়ান অফ দ্য অ্যাট্রাকটিভ পার্ট অফ দিস প্রোগ্রাম রফিক আহমেদ রফিক আহমেদ স্যার হচ্ছে আমাদের পরবর্তীতে ইসিজ দেখাবেন আর একদম শেষে গিয়ে আমাদের একটা ইসিজ অফ দা উইক একটা ইসিজ থাকে সেইটা আমরা নিয়ে ডিসকাস করব এই তিনটা অংশ মিলে হচ্ছে কিন্তু আমাদের মানে এই আজকে প্রোগ্রাম শুরুতে আমি প্রফেসর আব্দুল ওয়াদুদ চৌধুরীকে রিকোয়েস্ট করছি তার মানে টকটা শুরু করার জন্য প্রফেসর আব্দুল ওয়াদুদ চৌধুরী थैंक यू प्रोफेसर আতার ভাই ফর योर वेरी काइंड वर्ड्स लेट्स एंड जेंटलमैन देयर आर सो मेनी ऑफ माय टीचर्स आर हियर आई एम रियली ग्रेटफुल ऑल टू ऑल ऑफ देम एंड अ लिटिल बिट अफ्रेड एज़ वेल टुडे my talk is about ischemic heart disease what the ecg we can find in there i will try my best to make it a little bit palatable i am not sure whether i will be uh, that much effective or not but i will try and 
diary uh, legendary professor that they are professor mojumda professor of islam professor for rafi kamit is here they will be helping me if i get stuck in some question now a little bit of history in 1842 an italian scientist carlo mettiucci he realized that the electricity electricity is associated with heartbeat and in the late uh, 1895 william einstein he is credited for the invention of this in 1924 he got the nobel prize for physiology or medicine for this his work on ecg his first articles on ecg appears in 19, uh, 1902 and 1903 look at this the old ecg machine so cumbersome and look at this the new ecg machine unfortunately for the corona epidemic we cannot see the visible faces of the faces of the uh, ecg tech nowadays but still let's go to the topic what do you mean by ischemic heart disease is the result of limited blood supply to the heart muscles in more than 95% of cases is due to limited blood flow resulting from a narrow coronary artery so coronary heart disease and ischemic heart disease has become synonymous at the presentation we know about that and ecg is the chief diagnostic tool to identify ischemia injury and infarction and from the central ischemic zone to surrounding injured zone and the around the uh, central necrosis that's the infarction and the peripheral ischemic zone just getting some blood supply but not that results in different degree of ecg manifestation look at this ecg it look quite normal isn't it but what do you mean by normal we know that the standardization is all right that it is the sign of rhythm fever is positive in lead 1 to 3 our progression is all right ecg is normal but what about the ischemic point of view we can define a normal ecg from the ischemic point of view as that There is no significant key wave. ST segment at the isolectic line. Normal key waves in all families. Small key waves may be there, which are less than 0.04 second and less than 25 percent of the corresponding key wave complex. It can be present in all leads except in V1 to V3. There we do not expect any key whatsoever. A lead FTR will easily get a key wave complex. T wave can be slightly impart in the right precordial leads in V1 V2. We are not talking about the juvenile ECGs. In those cases, uh, their presentation is separate. Uh, we are actually talking about adult patients. But be aware of the normal ECG. Why? Normal ischemic ECG never excludes ischemic heart. Ischemia may be covered and it depends upon the supply demand balance there may be the narrowing which is not enough to produce any problem during rest but may be a cause of great concern during exhaustion and number 2 is the changes of mi takes some time to develop like the hm changes it also takes some time and many of these the abnormalities are non specific in fact if a patient comes with chest pain around 50% have chest uh, ecg changes which are quite specific for ischemia but the rest are not and single ecg cannot give progress we need serial ecg this is very true of ischemic heart and then again they do not always correlate with angiotomic disease and if there is paroxysmal event then say, then if we do a ecg at the point of time we may not get the event in the what do you mean by ischemia when there is a mismatch it can be a reversible process before the permanent cell damage occurs ischemia precedes myocardial cell injury injury precedes myocardial cell death that's necrosis or infarction ecg manifestation can be manifested as abnormalities of the st segment or abnormalities of the t wave these two are the most important thing there may be abnormalities of the t wave or the wave and the t angle but we will be concentrating on the st segment at t wave and 
when the ischemia is established, there is infarction, the Q wave will be there. But we want to prevent have something happening that bad. The most familiar pattern of in situ pattern of ischemia are the horizontal or down sloping ST segment depression of one millimeter more and or T wave infarction. Now, the ST segment is so important from the ischemic point of view. If the segment they represent the cardiac cycle, the period between depolarization and depolarization. In normal state, ST segment should be isolated. That is relative to the PR segment or TP segment. But most ST segment elevation is the result of non AMI causes. We are so much afraid of the ST segment elevation, but we should not, uh, we should be aware of the fact the ST segment elevation not necessarily mean that the patient is having an acute ischemic problem. In a study, uh, 123 patients coming with chest pain and with the ST segment elevation of more than one millimeter. Well, only 50% have MI, the rest are not, but they do have some cardiac ECG changes due to LPP or LPH. So we should be aware of this fact. And what is the importance of this ST segment elevation? Why we are paying so much attention to this? Because it has important prognostic factors. There's a correlation between the number of ECG leads that shows the ST depression and the extended severity of coronary artery disease. If the ST segment depression occurs in many leads, in eight or more leads, in many, uh, many uh, arterial territories with ST elevation in AVL and V1, the chances are that the patient have critical left wing coronary artery disease or equivalent CPR triple disease. So there is important. So whenever we're talking about ST segment, we have to sure how and when we are measuring it. We should measure that ST segment 80 milliseconds. That's two small squares away from the J point. And what's the J point? It's a junction between end of QR and beginning of the SCC. Now, this needs a reference point. What is the reference point? We should compare it to the TP segment or PR segment. Better to compare with the TP segment. Now, there has been some grading system for ischemia. The Starbucks have been bound. They, in the 1980s, they devised it. And shortly after occlusion of the coronary artery, the serial ECG changes that we can see, they have graded it in three. Grade one ischemia, the initial part, the T waves become tall, symmetrical, picked, but without ST segment elevation. Therein lies the problem. If you are aware of this fact that this is a harbinger of something very sinister happening very quickly, it should be taking prompt action. But if you think, oh, well, if there is some change, is it hyperkalemia, is it something else, is the person lean and thin, something like that, will miss the train. We can abort an MI if we act in this stage, hyperacute T The grade two, there's ST segment elevation in at least two adjacent leads. Torsion of the terminal portion of QR. I will show you what we mean by that. The grade three, there is changes in the terminal portion of the QR stopping. Now look at these uh, panels. The upper panel show a RS configuration of ECG. And look at this. In the hyperacute stage, in the upper panel, the T wave is becoming, the first one is normal. The second one, T wave is becoming tall, peaked, and quite based. And what do we mean tall? More than 50% of the corresponding R wave. Then, Look at the second stage, ST segment start elevating. And, but the S portion, the terminal QS portion is still quite normal. The last one, upper panel, now look at this, the S wave is getting obliterated. The R wave height is getting smaller and the ST segment getting up. It is a full blown ST elevated MI. Now, if the patient has QR complex, look at this. 
there will be change like the similarly grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 ischemia and the changes what we see in here aha has defined uh, the st segment depression the segment to which we pay so much attention there are many types of depression there may be junctional depression there may be down sloping depression or horizontal depression which one is important now look at this if there is a junctional depression that means j point is depressed then st segment is rapidly up sloping there is 60 to 70 percent chance is due to ischemia but 30 to 40 percent chance is not at all due to ischemia simple running walking having a sinus tachycardia can produce this this is of no harm but it may be associated with ischemia if the clinical scenario suggests that the second is horizontal depression this is very important look at this very low error rate if you get this horizontal ST depression you can be sure this is ischemia unless proved otherwise if there is other factor that I can consider some drugs or some uh, electrolyte changes or other things then I can say well this is very rarely they may not be due to ischemia what about down sloping ST depression it is also important there's slight chance of 5 to 10 percent chance is not due to ischemia but go 90 to 95 percent chance it is due to ischemia there are a huge lot of causes due to ST depression look at this unstable angina or reciprocal changes digoxin effect equity amine etc etc uh, as this lecture will be in the YouTube and the students particularly they can go through these things at their own pace at their own time we'll be concentrating more on the outline and the discussion now what about elevation the ST segment elevation expresses transmural microglial ischemia so it denotes more severe form of ischemia can it be transient yes transient or reversible ST segment elevation occurring at rest is frequently observed in pinch metal angina where coronary vessel spasm is the culprit what about HET during HET if there is ST segment elevation it reflects there is critical narrowing of coronary artery but there is a caveat provided there is no key wave of a previous semi why is that if a key wave is present in the baseline ECG and during exercise test you are getting ST elevation on that particular area that may not reflect new ischemia that actually reflects dyskinetic wall motion abnormality the ventricular wall is thin or scarred in there and that ST elevation more representative of actually aneurysmal changes but in patients who do not have any QR, any ST segment elevation during exercise is very very important but when we come to first start paying attention to ST segment elevation in MI back in 1920 party Dr. Party, Professor Party, he actually first uh, observed this thing but you know until the 1950s we were not paying much attention not using that information too much now present guidelines suggest the ST segment elevation the level of ST segment elevation should be matched with age sex and the ECD lead why now look at this there's a lot of work but it's very important to remember new ST elevation at the J point in two contiguous leaves at least in two contiguous leaves with a cutoff point of more than 0.1 millivolt that means one small spread that is significant ST elevation that is critical ST elevation but except the V2 to V3 level in those two leaves the cutoff points are not one small spread two small spreads and but 
in men 40 years old and above, in those cases, two small spans in V2, V3, until this. But if the patient is younger, then it should be more than 2.5 millimeters. But what happens to women? In case of women, the muscle mass is less, the changes are smaller. That's why if there is any ST elevation, more than one and a half small square, point, uh, 1.5 millivolt, 150 millivolt, 0.15 millivolt, that is critical, that is important. Now, what is this, this Minnesota code? We are using the modern ECG machines, which are using computer technology. There are a lot of algorithms in there. And from studies, they have uh, devised this Minnesota code. This pedestrian requires that more than or equal to one millimeter stem elevation in one or more limbs, one, two, three, avial, avial, v5, v6, or more than or equal to two millimeter stem elevation in v1 to v4. If that is present, the ECT diagnosis will be acute MI or considered acute MI. This is Minnesota code and this is incorporated in almost all the machines. They are also using other algorithms to improve the sensitivity and specificity of the diagnosis. Now, why did ST7 elevation occur? I'm getting a lot of theories in here because I think it's so important. The heart is something in a, uh, uh, a few bits, you can be a person who is alive or not. So we should have a little bit more understanding of what is happening. Now, as the cells become hypoxic, potassium HP chain is open. Local areas of hyperkalemia develop, causing injury currents to flow between them and the normal migration. That produces ST elevation on ECG. But where? The manifest segment factor is, it is, uh, factor is direct to the surface of injury. So we will get the ST elevation overlying the least uh, where the injury is there. The least that present over the injured area will show the ST elevation. What about the ST depression? The least opposite to that, more than 90 degree or beyond, will show some degree of ST depression. This ST elevation is called reactive change, and that the opposite away change is called reciprocal change. There are a lot of causes. We know this. We'll be talking about it later on. Now, let's go into the main topic. What about the coronary heart disease presentation? It could be asymptomatic, it could be chronic, uh, stable angina, we now call it chronic uh, 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 syndrome, coronary syndrome. It could be acute coronary syndrome, that means unstable angina or MI, both ST and non ST elevated MI. It can be heart failure or death. Asymptomatic? Yes. A patient can be totally asymptomatic. The ECG can show some changes. The patient may have critical sterosis, still there may not be at all any symptom. Again, many diabetic patients, uncontrolled diabetic patients, may not have any pain as a result of neuropathy. The other extreme is sudden death. Very unfortunate. 25% patient of acute MI may present, this may be the sudden death, may be the presentation. And look at this, 20% of the patient of MI will die before reaching hospital. And most of these deaths are caused by ventricular fibrillation. But the usual presentation we get is angina. There's a mismatch between the oxygen supply and demand because the blood flow is limited due to narrowing of the artery. And why the pain is there? Anaerobic metabolism, lactic acid buildup, and other things. So angina, when you call it, can be stable or pinch vessel variant or unstable angina. The stable angina, same level of activity produces the symptom. And that's why uh, it's mostly called exertion angina. It can be produced by physical activity or emotional excitement or increased cardiac overflow. And classically, it is relieved by rest of nitrate. The problem is 50% of these patients have normal finding in a resting disease. 
What should we look for in this special diseases? We should look for prior MI, evidence of prior MI, evidence of intraventricular conduction delay or varying degree of AV block, or different degree of arrhythmia or STTUF changes. And in these cases, ETT is the initial procedure of choice. This is a classical example of symmetrical TF inversion that we see in a case of stable angina. What about prismatal angina? This is the variant angina. This occurs not at exertion but at rest and due to coronary spasm, not due to fixed block. There may be some degree of thick narrowing, but that's usually minor. So, for instance, on that, there will be coronary spasm. Usually, uh, it occurs with at the same time of day, may wake up the patient from the sleep and very unpredictable. Now look at the upper pelvis. During pain, there is a still division in lead two and three. Two minutes later, no pain is the ST segment is going down. And is the ST segment can be very high? Yes. It can be very, very dramatically high. And if we got the chance of doing an echo in there, we may see on that territory, the artery that's involved in the spasm of prismatal angina, that uh, the wall motion may be totally attenuated. And after a few minutes, when the pain is gone, the wall motion started coming back to normal. That's very surprising. And that medication is a defense. We know that. What about unstable angina? It's a part of the non stfc isn't it? Prolonged angina pain at rest or new onset angina or that at least plus two or three thesis classification. The patient who has very stable angina now becoming uh, unstable, now becoming uh, precipitated by much less exercise or having new symptoms or is not relieved by the usual medication, all of these are unstable angina. These patients require early intervention. What could be happen? During the pain, we can get different degree of changes, but mostly ST depression or and or T wave inversion. What about non ST elevated MI? Almost similar like unstable angina. The difference is there is already some cell injury. There is raised cardiac injury. But there is no ST elevation in ECG. Remember, this is in MI. This is not only ST elevated MI, we pay much more attention. But non ST elevation MI is very important. Do you know why? Because if you consider these patients, acutely the mortality rate, death rate is higher with ST elevated MI. But if you consider one month, six month death rate, the patient with non ST elevated MI often have higher mortality. Because sometimes we think that these patients have lesser degree of coronary artery disease, which is not correct. And the ECD changes, there can be a flattening or some degree of depression or deep inversion. All these changes can be there. And the evolving changes can be there. What can be evolving changes? There may be downward ST segment depression, which is common. There may be upward ST segment elevation, uncommon. Symmetrical tube inversion, very common, or can be a combination of all these. Look at this ECG. There's only very minor change. Look at one, AVL, five, six, slight ST depression. But the patient have chest pain, the troponin is raised. So this is the case of non ST lifted MI, infralateral one involvement. Or the patient can show dramatic changes like DT inversion. This we used to call subendocardial MI, now it is we call it non ST elevated MI. Why this ST elevation and non ST elevation are separated? Because of the treatment approach. We have seen by studies have shown that in ST elevated MI, if you use the thrombolysis, it gives mortality benefit, it's beneficial. But in non-ST MI, if you give thrombolysis, you are in trouble. The mortality rate may be increased. But what about the intervention? 
in both these cases, ST elevated or non ST elevated, interpretation is of course preferable. And, and that gives a better result. Now comes the third part, ST elevated MI. That's the third part of the acute coronary syndrome. We know, look at this panel from left to right before infarction. The second panel shows the starting of the hyperacute T wave and ST elevation started. Then gradually it's going up and gradually there is formation of the Q wave. The T wave, the coronary T wave, yet become inverted. And after many months, let's say when the star is healed, at least 12 weeks, 6 to 12 weeks, you get an upright T wave. This has become an old MI. There is a T wave which suggests you, you have had a transmural infarction. Now look at this ECG. Look at V1, V2, V3. This ST elevation may be benign, may be malignant. How can I be sure? The clinical context. Chest pain is there. The chest pain nature suggests is, MI is happening. This type of ST elevation is there. Please, please go for intervention of thrombolysis. Do not wait for the typical ST changes. Now look at this one. There is hyperacute T wave again in the V1 to V2 to V4 segment. If you start treating this patient at this level, within one to three hours of onset of chest pain, thrombolysis is very useful. But after three hours, if the PCI just gives better result. After nine to twelve hours. Even thrombolysis is, is not of only of marginal benefit. Now, acute migratory infarction, we have to understand this. ST segmental elevation occurs if persistent complete occlusion of an artery, supplying a significant area of myocardium without adequate collateral circulation. This is important. We may find some patients who have apparently normal STG, but when we do the angiogram, we see one artery may be totally drop, but it's getting a lot of collateral. And this has happened over many years. So there has not been much cellular infarction or injury, but the level of capacity of work is reduced. The patient will become symptomatic on exertion. What about uh, unsuitable and non stmi It results from non-occlusive thrombus or a small area of involvement, subendocrine involvement, or a very brief occlusion, or an occlusion with an educated collateral, you will get the chest pain with or without the enzyme changes, but the ECG will not show the ST elevation and there may not be any QA. We should remember that the ST elevation due to AMI usually demonstrates a regional pattern because of the artery of supply that's involved. If it's the anterior MI, the changes is likely to be in V3V4. The septal MI, V2V3, we usually get from V2 to V4, that is central septum. Okay? That may be the one may be involved, depending upon how uh, proximal the block is. There may be lateral MI, where the diagonals, diagonals are involved. There may be inferior MI, because of the right coronary involvement or sometimes the circumflex involvement. But if there is diffuse ST elevation, these are usually due to non-AMI causes, like pericarditis. So localization is important in AMI. And how do we localize? An important determinant of the site of coronary artery occlusion is the direction of vector ST segment deviation. Where the ST segment is elevated, that territory is injured. The injury factor is always oriented toward the injured area. So, ST segment elevation over the injured area and reciprocal ST depression the opposite state. This slide, we are using the word. Indicative ST segment changes, reciprocal ST segment changes. Indicative means this ST elevation overlies the injured area. Reciprocal means opposite to the area 
there may be a steep depression that the changes the division is opposite there will be depression what about a septal anterior easily the reciprocal changes the posterior we do not record posterior easily so you won't get any changes what about lateral look at 1 8 5 6 and now the heart is like this lateral wall is here and if the lateral wall the upper lateral wall is involved the inferior lip c and here is opposite to that there may be some changes reciprocal changes in there in anterolateral wall similarly some changes is there what about inferior wall involvement look at this. the inferior wall is involved now the injury current is here so there will be a steel division in two three areas but the one area they may show the changes the st depression p to v3 because the reciprocal case can be seen if it is beyond the axis kind injury kind axis beyond 90 degree there may be some changes in there st depression in there in posterior indicative change is not there we only see the reciprocal changes mirror changes that's what we see lateral means this one and five six or seven inferior to cfs anterior and septal d1 to d4 the center septal am i isn't it beautiful st elevation in d1 to d4 up to d5 we can call symbolic uh, anterior, if there is extension of up to six. Anterolateral, the involvement is four, five, six, one APL, or could be inferior. Now, we divide into two groups. I have done that. We inferior MI family of QF MIs, which are inferior, inferior posterior, two posterior, right ventricular MI, sometimes posterior lateral MI. Look at this one. Lead two, three, areas. Beautiful ST segment elevation. But look at one and LVL. There is ST depression. So this is reciprocal change. Indicative change ST elevation in lead two, three, areas. The Q wave will appear in two, three, areas. And usually the Q wave becomes largest in lead three. Next largest in lead area is smallest in lead two. I tell my students, look at this chart. It's lying obliquely eh, like this. Now, right corner is going like this. And lead three is like this. So the greatest change is the right corner is involved. You will see in the lead three. Now, look at this old image. The key wave, smallish one in lead two, a bigish one in lead three, a medium size Q in lead FES. As we have told, the largest Q in lead 3, the next largest we expect in lead FES, the smallest in lead 2. Remember something. You may get in Q web, that may be quite uh, big. Why? In lead 3 alone, but that does not mean the patient have MI. You have to have changes. ST segment case or key wave present anything in at least two contiguous leads to consider that it's pathological, it's related to MI. What about acute posterior MI? There is, let us consider lead 2, 3 FEF. There's slight elevation in lead 3. FEF is going up, but one millimeter not yet. So I cannot call it significant. So it does not correspond to the diagnosis of acute MI because the two contiguous lead is not showing the required amount of ST elevation. But what about V1, V2, V3? There is ST depression. This is classical of two posterior MI. And we should remember that this is one case where there is no ST elevation, but patient is eligible for thrombolysis. We should be paying much more attention to this. And always, always, if the pain is suggestive of MI, pay a little more attention to the ECG. Are we missing something? 
Now look at this one. The upper two panel is the twelve lady CG. Lead two, three FF show small Q wave. Q wave inversion in three FF very prominent, flattened in lead two. But look at P1, P2. The R wave are a bigish. The R wave not supposed to be that big in V2. And the T wave, they are too good. V1, V2 is not supposed to show beautiful T waves. They are supposed to show smallish, insignificant T waves. T waves should be beautiful in mid to lateral leads. But here it is present. What would it be? Because there is an old inferior mind, we have done the posterior leads. Uh, look at this, P7, T8, T9. There are T waves. So this means the patient has old inferior posterior mind. Why this is important? Because this means the patient has much higher muscle damage than only in inferior mind. The area of damage is wider. And which artery is important in inferior mind? What the intervention is for the primary PCI? Before you go into the cath lab, just we have a look at the ACG and try to determine which artery is involved in anterior MI, in inferior MI, and where could be the lesion. Now, in inferior MI, that could be RC is the most important artery, circumference could be there, but to remember, a type of reality means an LED that goes beyond the apex and supplying part of the epic interior wall of the LV. And the type of LED may be responsible, we can see an ST elevation in V456, 456, and also in 2 3 years. Is that LED and RT involved? No. It's LED type 4, a big artery. And we see the V1, V2, V3 despair. That means the upper part of the LED is quite all right. The lesion is in mid to distal LED. The LED is wrapped around the apex and that produces changes in both in the anterolateral leads and also in the inferior wall. Now, which artery should we consider? If we have a specific elevation more than one millimeter in inferior leads, we say this is MI. Well, we should try to consider which artery. ST secondary elevation in lead three more than lead two, which RC. The reciprocal change will be more in this case. But if the elevation is more in lead two, now consider this, the heart is like this. RC is going down there, lead three is there, and so the changes very likely we get because the vector lies over there, the ST elevation more in lead three. But if it is due to circumference that goes behind the heart, then supplies the inferior wall is more aligned to the lead two. The ST elevation will be more in lead two. And the reciprocal change because of the current of injury is going that way will not be that much in one APL. But lateral wall involvement may be there. We should look at one APL five six there may be as the elevation not reciprocal case depression. And we should also have a look at the LAT type 4. If there is a selection both anterior and inferior leaf, it's not two artery involvement, it's single artery involvement. Now, how can it be sure it's proximal or distal RCA? Proximal artery involvement, much more area is damaged. Distal artery involvement, there may be small, only PDA is involved. So, how can you have a look at it? If there is ST sec pain, I see electrical elevated in case of an inferior MI, but we find that the ST sec is depressed in V2V3V4, the reciprocal change, suspect the RV infarction because the patient has very proximal RC occlusion, so RV before the RV branch, the RV is involved here. How can I confirm that? By the right side digestive, V3 and V4. Whatever posterior mind. Easily is caused by LCH occlusion, but it can be seen in dominant RC occlusion. And how can you be sure? 
that the ST segment elevation is a posterior chest lift, P7 to 9. And why are those? P7 in the same line of 5 6 but in the posterior axillary line, that's P7, in the mid scapular line, P8, paraspinal line, that's P9. And what are the changes? There's horizontal ST depression, there are reciprocal changes in P1 to P3. There is tall, broad airway and dominant upright T wave, particularly in V2. Now look at this. V1 on the right side of the midline, V2 on the right, left side of the midline. And V2 of a left, the right atrium is upper part, ventricle is the lower part. So V2 overlies the, over the right ventricle. The posterior wall directly behind that. The changes will be much more prominent in V2. If there is a tall R, the R is greater than S in V2. In a case of inferior MI, consider that its posterior extension is there. If there is no ST elevation in inferior wall, but still there is ST depression in V2, uh, uh, V1 to V3 with a tall R in V2, consider that it could be true posterior MI. We really miss those things. Look at this one. There is ST elevation in lead 2, 3 FES. Now look at this. The elevation is, look to, is much more than the lead 3. So there must be some complex involvement. Now look at the anterior leads, P1, P2, P3. The P2 shows a very beautiful T wave. Oh my, is there extension? Yes, of course. Horizontal ST depression. Look at this. If you Consider this like this if the anterior MI, interceptal MI, the ST elevation occurs in P1, P2, P3. If you just opposite it, mirror image, then you get this picture. Posterior one picture will show a depression in here. And the patient has also lateral one involvement, which also suggests P5, P6, 1. All these are showing ST elevation. That means this is the Look at this. This is a dominant circumflex circulation, and there is extensive damage to the lateral, posterior, and also inferior circle. We can confirm that by the posterior leg, P789. Typical ST elevation is there. How do we do that? Like the tubability CG, detach the four, five, six legs from their Plane after doing a triple ACG in this case, then attach those things on the back seven, eight, nine position. Record again. Here, look at this V1, V2, V3 showing the changes that we have seen the previous ECG, and seven, eight, nine showing the changes that are present in the posterior surface. This is a classical acute posterior MI with lateral line involvement, with some inferior wall involvement and dominant circumflex circulation. Now look at this one. These changes should be managed as an ST elevated MI. So we should go for thrombolysis. If primary is in room top, that's better. If not, we should use thrombolytics in here, even though there is not ST elevation. One cavity is there in those age more than 40 years, one millimeter or more ST segment elevation should be taken as a critical point. Otherwise, 0.5 millimeter in youngish patient, 0.5 millimeter ST elevation or in female, half the small ST elevation if he's 789 is enough for diagnosing post infarction. And the recommendation is that, is the guidelines, we should do the posterior or RV leaves in any case of inferior MI. What about the RV infarction? That's another member of the inferior MI group. RV infarction results from occlusion of the proximal RC. How do I decide? ST elevation in P1 in association with inferior wall MI. ST elevation and how much elevation? More than one millimeter or more in P4 with an upright T. It's the most sensitive sign of RV infarction. Occasionally, 
give us a QR maybe there. PTR can be used. We have, will show you which one is more sensitive. Sometimes, in case of RV infection, we get ST elevation in V2, V3. That resembles anterior MI. But inferior wall, frank inferior wall MI, with ST elevation V1 to V2, V3, actually is suggestive, maybe suggestive of RV infection. Yes, ST segment elevation V4R, can it help us predicting which artery is involved? Yes, it can. Look at the first one. Proximal RC occlusion, there will be ST elevation, there will be positive T wave. Distal RC occlusion, there will not be any ST elevation. There is no, and positive PUF is still be there. But if it is still the circumflex, if the circumflex is too big, there will be a depression in there. And right side the list, which one we should pay more attention? Look at V3 R, right side V3. Sensitivity around 70%, but very specific. But V4 R is both sensitive and very specific, very good. We should use it. In case of all inferior MI, we should use a right-sided lead, at least a V4R. Can we look at the V1, the changes in that? It can suggest, it's very specific, ST segment isoelectric or elevated in V1, when the V2 and V3 show ST depression in a background of acute inferior MI, such a start infection is there, but you need to do the right-sided lead to be sure of that. Enough about inferior MI. Let's go to the anterior MI. Anterior MI, we can get a QS, Q, or QS complex in lead V1 to V3. The ST changes, as we have shown, ST elevation, T inversion, ST gradually getting flattening out, T gradually getting up. These are the changes we'll get. Anterior MI, similar changes. Look at this one. Q in one FL and look at four, five, six. There's narrow Q in there, but the remarkable thing is that the R wave files are not there. It should have been there. That suggests there's, there is anti letter volume. Now look at the T wave. The T waves are upright. That means there is already helium. The patient has old anterolateral MI, but the rate is high a little bit, isn't it? This suggests the patient is having some LB dysfunction, maybe. It is important to localize the lesion, isn't it? We have so, so, seen that in RCA. What about uh, LATJ2D, left side J2? Septal one supplies the basal interventricular septum, including the bundle branches. So any anterior MI showing bundle branch block, new bundle branch block, that means the lesion is very proximal before the first septum. We should remember that diagonal supplies the high lateral one of the uh, region of the heart, which are represented by the lead one and F here. Let's go there. Occlusion proximal to S1. There will be ST elevation in F here. Why? Because the septum is here, the degree of current in injury current is going like this, and the right 90 degree angle and may is uh, FVR. There will be ST elevation in there. But in V1, it will be more than 2 millimeters. There may be RBVB, and there may be ST depression in V5. If it's only due to occlusion to proximal to D1, there will be Q wave in lead one if yet. If D1 is spared, there will not be Q wave in there. ST depression will be more if the lateral wall is involved. Then we can get the reciprocal changes because that's opposite to the vector of the injury current. What about extensive interval MI? Occlusion above D1 and S1. We'll get a C elevation in 
all the leads. If you want to report, if I did this service there, one APL is yes, there will be a television in APR sometimes. And there will be depression in two, three APR because the lateral one, one APL is involved. And the ST elevation will be more in APR. The reciprocal change will be three. Look at this. APL is here. If it is showing the more ST elevation, of course, the lead three should show should be showing the more ST depression. Now look at this one. Occlusion before S1 here. There is under branch block pattern. If the patient had a previous ECG that do not show any under RBBB pattern, this is definitely a case of lesion where the lesion is very proximal in the LED before the first septum. What about this one? Lift one and FDL show the ST elevation. Remember, these are limb lifts. So one millimeter ST elevation is significant. In the chest lift is two millimeter or sometimes the 2.5 millimeter. In the lateral one lift is again one millimeter is sufficient. Now, this is involved the diagonal alone may be involved in there, which supplies the high lateral valve region. Anterior apical, if there is a wrap up LED that will get a still emission both in the anterior lift, in VTV6, and also in inferior valve. It does not mean two artery involvement, it does mean a very biggish LED involvement, which supplies all the effects and beyond in the inferior one. So that's the changes we can get in this type of LED. Whatever left pain disease, we are so afraid of it, isn't it? Because the left system supplies more than 70% of the blood supply of the heart including the bundle branches, including the papillary muscle responsible, the pillar who maintains the integrity of the mitral valve. So if left pain is involved, we are a goner. We are in deep trouble. How can we identify that? The presence of ST depression one millimeter in eight or more surface legs, in part of lateral ST depression. Coupled with ST elevation in FDR and V1. Look at this. Left main is, is, is like this, important here. The whole territory is deprived of supply. Then the injury kind is going that way. So the other way, the V1, right near 90 degree angle, and FVR directly away from it. That should show what? Depression. Why? Depression will be in here because we are having disease in here, going down, and elevation in here, the other way around. ST segment elevation in lead FVR more than V1 in these cases. Why display ST segment depression or anterior ST elevation can be there? We'll show the ECG. And you know, this is very important. Look at this one. ST depression in lead one, also in two and FVF, also in ST depression in FVL, and here P3 to P6 ST depression is there. Why this pay? The territory involved is both LAT territory and also the RCA territory. How is that possible? Look at FVR, there is ST elevation. So that means it's a left vein involvement. Now what about this one? Same. ST depression very pronounced in one APL, two uh, APL. Can I start? Can I start? Hello? Hello? Yes, yes, you can start. Yes, well. Uh, look, look at this one.
host please uh, unmute everybody except the uh, mute, mute everybody unmute i i'll be on alone unmute uh, meet everybody except the speaker please uh, look at this one st depression wide spread and then to also look at this one st depression enter wall there's both st depression and wide spread st depression this is a case of severe left pain disease or severe triple disease now these are the patients sometimes the this particular the previous one we sometimes when we get this ecg the choice of treatment is of course primary pci if we do not get that we should be using thrombolysis look at this there is no st elevation still thrombolysis can actually save a patient's life and this is obvious ST lesion and wide spread ST depression such in very severe triple vessel disease or left pain disease. Now this is the curiosity, atrial ischemia. Why curiosity? We do not pay much attention to it, but for academic purpose, we should have some idea what do we talk about. PR segment elevation or depression in patients with MI indicate concomitant atrial ischemia or infarction. We do not pay much attention to the PR segment. unless it is prolonged well in case of acute mi setting if we are interested we should have a look at the pr segment and atrial involvement is widespread in up to 10% with stmi it can be present 10% not less and mostly right atria could be by atria very uncommonly uh, left atria live at all produces some uh, diagnostic criteria you can go through it later on the main thing is look at the b and c the pr segment either elevated or depressed compared with the tp segment look at this one the arrows are there the pr segment is depressed beyond the tp segment and the patient has acute inferior my st elevated into severe so there is actually infarction look at this one that is pr segment depression the second panel the b shows the classical change so if you pay attention to these things we can identify and what does it signify actually they signify that the lesion is very proximal uh, uh, artery is involved So the atrial branch appears from the very early part of the artery, corresponding artery, isn't it? And also another evidence of atrial infarction is the atrial fibrillation. Sometimes we see that with acute MI, and that suggests the atria is also infarcted. Now we announce about ST segment. Now what about the Q wave? Q wave traditionally considered a sign of myocardial necrosis, but we think that that they all the tissue are gone not necessary q wave that appear within 6 hours from onset of symptom may not signify irreversible damage so prompt thrombolytic therapy or pci may uh, elevate the appearance uh, of the q wave it could be chance but if it is present it in the means large ischemic coronal infarct you know we usually talk we used to talk about transmural ischemia and mural ischemia mural infarction and subventricular infarction but mri particularly mri has shown that many patient with q wave mi actually do not have through and through transmural infarction and many patient with transmural infarction do not have show any q wave in general if the q wave is there larger area of myocardium is involved if it say the active 17% of the myocardial mass lv mass it should be involved before the appearance of a q wave is there so any q wave the damage is more but it may not be permanent look at this one this is the case uh, a female patient The Q wave, anterior septal MI, Q wave is there already developed. 
look at this one they are letting totally occluded of the s1 and d1 now after pci a beautiful flow both s1 and d1 are open and also the rest of the blood flow are there and after two months uh, that look at the uh, p1 p2 p3 small r has appeared in p2 p3 remember in inferior mi with revascularization in 25% cases t will disappear with this spontaneous or therapeutic revascularization in case of anterior mi around 12% cases t will disappear and that depends mostly upon the degree of collateral that is present that allows viable myocardium to be present there viable islands of tissue is there so after thera uh, therapeutic or spontaneous revascularization that some tissue are already dead the r wave height will not be as before but the rest of the tissue gradually get well enough active and the r wave come back now there are some stmi equivalence we need to know about why because we miss them and they need aggressive treatment because they are equivalent to elevated mi for which we are paying so much attention one is wellens syndrome is a very famous cardiology and if i'm not wrong probably he has died in this corona pandemic one of the uh, novel name in case of uh, electrocardiography field we see a pattern of deeply inverted or bifurcated t wave in anterior leg p2 to p3 and this is very specific for critical stenosis in proximal lat or left main coronary right in 2002 First, uh, established a diagnostic criteria for valence syndrome. Deeply inverted or bifurcated T wave, isoelectric or minimally elevated ST segment, not more, not more than less than one millimeter. No precordial T wave, preserved precordial R wave progression. There is recent history of angina. The ECT pattern is present and persistent in pain system, but the biomarkers is slightly elevated there are two types type a biphasic initial positive terminal negative in 25% cases type b deep vein symmetrically inverted t wave look at this one the t wave is inverted v2 v3 up to v4 v1 to v4 you can look at this one biphasic and the type b deep vein inverted This is shows the classical biphasic T wave wellness syndrome. Look at V1, V2, and V3. Also, V4. Enter this. The R wave is somewhat present gradually, and this is persistent. This is the type A wellness. This is again deeply symmetrical T wave inversion. Type B wellness. We call it seven. We used to call it only seven because of the mind, but Subventricular MI is where is the only distal part or a small branch is involved? No, this is proximal LAD critical lesion. And if we do not identify it properly, look at this CCD P1, P2, P3. There is biphasic T wave, minimal ST elevation, R wave is still there. It was not treated properly, and that has resulted in a ST elevated full blown MI. If we could have treated it earlier on, we could have avoided a Q wave MI. The muscle mass would have been uh, survived some muscle mass. The second ST elevated MI equivalent is deep winter T wave. That also present with the obvious ST segment elevation, and that also in only in 2008, very uh, re uh, recent. The key diagnostic feature. Uh, we'll show the ECG, and you should remember the ECG. That's a very unique type of ECG that will be uh, fixed in your mind. And this is seen in two percent of LAD uh, LAD operation. Why this is important? The same thing. If we do not identify it, we do under treat the patient. Look at this. This is the typical deep winter. 
achieved it. There will be no absence, uh, absence of steel lipsion in precordial lead. Every there will be a steel lipsion. And the junctional depression and upsloping acid segment. Look at this one. This is the classical ECG. If you remember this ECG, whenever you get this ECG, you will be electrified to start treating the patient acutely because the patient is having an MI. And that patient needs thrombolysis or revascularization by primary PCI, whichever is possible and feasible, particularly in this corona pandemic era. Now, that's a conundrum, the left bundle mass block. The ECG based is already abnormal. How can you diagnose the MI in there? In this ECG, we see that there is the QS complex in the lead, it is positive that T wave should be uh, ST depression and T wave should be opposite to that. If the QS complex is negative, the T wave should be upright. That's the appropriate discordance that should be present in usual LDBB. Now, if the patient have a previous ECG which does not have any LDBB, now he has chest pain and LDBB, the diagnosis is obvious, straightforward, this is acute MI, treat it, revascularize it, either by thrombolysis or by primary PCA. But if the patient has previously documented LBBP, what are you going to do? We are going to use Galbosa criteria. At a Galbosa now, I'm going to take for a key action. What about LBBP in a patient? Now patient have LB dysfunction. Now we know that for LB dysfunction with LBBP, we consider uh, CRT treatment. Now, if the patient has DCM and LBBP due to that, the cardiac resuscitation therapy, biventricular pacing will be very beneficial for the patient. But if it is due to MI, the patient may not benefit that much. How can you identify, even without doing a call, without giving patient any hope, false hope, that we can do something for them, that the patient is actually had a big anterior MI. We can use the Chapman sign or Carvera sign. Diagnosis of old MI in presence of left bundle mass block. Very simple. Any notch in the upstrokes of the R wave in the LBBB suggests that this LBBB is related to anterior MI. As simple as that. Now, what is Carpenter's sign? Again, very simple. Any notch in the ascending limb of the wide S wave that is present in the anterior limb, if it is there, it is due to this uh, voltage in the pathway is suggestive of there is MI, the patient has anterior MI. So, before telling that, we can do something really great for you by giving a uh, 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 look at this uh, CRT, we can say that, well, you have LBDP, you have LBD dysfunction, we may do some, do some good by putting a CRT. It's very expensive, but we have to be sure that it's going to work well for you. You may not end up as a uh, non responder In the impacted uh, uh, LV, a CRT may not be that good. And what about acute MI? Elena B. Garbosa. In 1996, she diagnosed infarction with LBB with C criteria. Concordant ST elevation. That means in LBBP, in the list that have a positive QRS, you have a ST elevation. We have said that in the, with LBBP, if we have positive QRS, the ST segment QRS is opposite. But in this case, if you have no ST segment is also elevated, this is MI. Or concordant ST depression. In the leaves, in LBBP, anterior leaves has negative QS complex. And the uh, ST segment QF is upright. But if you are having ST segment depression, concordant ST depression, that's also suggested that you have primary ST TF changes, this is MI. Or excessively discordant ST elevation. Now, this is very specific. 
if you have this 40 psi 3 and 2 the total square of more than 3 has a specificity of 90 percent for diagnostic MI but it's not that sensitive so you have to resort to clinical determination and echo and also biomarkers to be sure sometimes this is what happened in the usual LPP QRS and ST7 is opposite QRS negative, ST up, QRS positive, ST down. In case of Gargosa criteria, QRS up, ST up, this is the MI. QRS down, ST down, this is the MI. Or too much ST elevation, that also suggests you are having MI. And now look at this, LBB or PACE even. RP pacing produces ST elevation. A, a left under mass block pattern. So this criteria is also applicable for that. This is an example. Look at this white complex in lead one and also V5 V6, you are getting ST elevation. This is Garbosa criteria for protein ST elevation. This is acute MS. Now this one a little bit tricky. Left bundle bus block pattern, one AVL, and also five, six, four, five, six, showing the wide uh, uh, R weight. But look at ABS. Keywords complex positive, exit segment one millimeter up. Concorded ST lifting, even in one lead, is diagnosing of acute MI in presence of LBBB because it satisfies the garbage criteria. The guidelines are this is in the ventricular phase system, we can use the same formula, but they are of course less specific. Look at this ECG. There is after P wave there is a spike before the QS complexes in each complex. There is ST elevation Concordant ST elevation in one MPL five. So this is PACE ECG with positive Garbusa criteria. The patient has MI. If we know how to look for it, we can diagnose it. What about RPBB? It's not a problem. We can diagnose it quite well. Ischemia diagnosis may be difficult, but infarction diagnosis is not difficult. Look at this one. Look at V1. There is complete right bundle class block. Now, look at this one. The ST segment started elevating, V2, V3. So, this is acute ST elevated MI in presence of previous RBBB. We can diagnose it. Now, look at this one. Complete right bundle branch block. Now, the next one, there is ST elevation in inferior lead. We have diagnosed the anterior MI, we have diagnosed the interior MI. So, RBBB do not hamper the diagnosis of MI. What about old MI? Look at this one. Deep, wide s -wave in lead one, suggesting right bundle branch block. Let's go to V1. V1, V2, V3 showing RBBB pattern, but there is a Q-wave in there. V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V up to V4, V5. This is anterior MI. What about the inferior leaf? There is also Q wave in there. Two, three, FES. The Q wave is there. So there's both anterior and inferior MI. Both are old. Because the, look at the T wave. The T wave has become stabilized, suggesting this is old. But there are some mimickers. Many baby cars are there. It's a long, so I'll go a little bit short. Early repolarization is important. If we do not identify it, we may misdiagnose it. With just slight chest pain, we can diagnose it as having acute MI. Previously, we used to tell the ST elevation, the first top panel, the first one, that's the classical early repolarization. But nowadays, also the bottom. Uh, two complexes in the upper panel, the slur ST segment or a notch in there also suggest a polarization. 
look at the corresponding ECG. We are seeing it. In the next ECG, look at lead 2, 3, avian. We are seeing ST elevation, classical early depolarization. And that's J point gel evolution with the ST segment concave upward. Look at V5. There is a beautiful notch in there. Look at P6. That's a slurred distal part. All pattern of early repolarization is present in a single ECG. And this is suggestive of this patient has early repolarization, not MI. That's another mimicker of ischemia, LV3 strain. And we have to be, we, this type of tall R in lateral leaves, that's it fulfills the criteria of LVA with ST depression, T inversion, is such a LP3 strain, we can be sure the patient has ischemia. The patient may also present with deep inverted T wave, particularly in a patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, there is gross LVH, and that produces this type of issues. How can you be sure? The initial upsloping of the elevated ST segment it's typically concave in the LPH, but it's more like a sort of convex in case of SES. We call it both ST segment elevation, isn't it? The T wave is usually asymmetrical in the LPH, as opposed to the symmetrical T wave we see in coronary ischemia. Look at this one, asymmetrical T wave in lateral leaves. Look at this one, deep inverted T wave, and the LPH is there. What about RPH? This question, look at lead one. Liquid QS is there. Is it due to right ventricular hypertrophy or right axis uh, deficient due to love posterior hemoglobin? Look at lead two. There is deep pulmonary. Lead. So there must be something wrong with RP. Let's go to V1. Tall R is there. It's narrow. And small beginning key is there. Almost QR pattern. And the P wave initial part is very sharp, suggesting this is the case of right atrial and right ventricular hypertrophy. And the look at the T wave changes. Now consider this. LP, RP is resting up around the LV. When the RP hypertrophy occurs, there is some clockwise rotation. The RP gets the upper hand. There is relative ischemia in the RP. There is the ECG changes that, that are present that goes from V1 to V5 or V4, there will be T inversion or ST depression. Normally, we can get it only V1, maybe V2. But in this case, because of the clock and rotation, we are getting that. It does not mean there is anterior ischemia. It does mean we have to assess the patient in other ways. If it's a youngish patient, obviously, this is due to RP hypertrophy alone. Now, that's pericarditis. Why this is television? Not limited to a regional supply area. Wait, look at this. PR segment elevation in FVR. This is the lead, we do not pay much attention. But in many cases, it's very important for pericarditis diagnosis, for left main involvement diagnosis. This area is important. So, and that's the most specific sign of diagnosing pericarditis. But the first thing is that the ST elevation that we see is widespread. It does not limit the specific vascular territory. It doesn't correspond to MI because MI is a vascular phenomena. It's a regional phenomena. And how do we differentiate it? ST elevation in pericarditis is concave. In MI, it's convex or flat. ST elevation is diffuse. In MI, it's territorial. PR depression is the hallmark of pericarditis. Q wave is the hallmark of MI. And another very key point is that the T inversion that can happen in pericarditis comes late in stage four. 
when the ST already the ST segment has normalized. But in case of acute MI, the ST elevation and T wave changes both become simultaneously, they coexist. That's a great important differentiating point. What about HCM? We have already mentioned there will be there may be deep T wave changes that repeat, that depicts ischemia. Maybe it's real ischemia, maybe it's relative ischemia. And it can also mimic MI. The Q waves will be there. How can you be sure? Usually that our LPH uh, criteria is there. Also, these Q waves are usually very sharp and narrow. What about LP aneurysm? This presents another problem. The Q wave is already there. Now, this ST elevation is it reinfarction? Is it acute MI the patient is having chest pain? Is it actually the Q wave already has settled? The acute MI process is already going on, it's seven days or three days old, that's why we have a established Q wave, something like that. Or is it LP aneurysm? The ischemia is somewhere else. How can you be sure? Factors favoring the LP ventricular aneurysm is it identical to previous ECG available? Absence of dynamic ST segment change. There is no reciprocal change. Well formed Q wave. If it is acute STMI, there will be dynamic change, reciprocal ST depression, new ST change if you can compare with previous ECG, and of course the clinical context, ongoing ischemic chest pain. What about this one? We are almost at the end. Hyperkalemia, we know. It produces the classical changes, including the uh, ST elevation. But uh, I do think almost anybody can pay attention to the picking of the TUS and identify this is the hyperkalemia. This is more advanced stage. This patient has at least a calcium level of, in acute case, is more than seven, in chronic case, uh, more than six, a, 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 in chronic case, it could be more than eight. Hypercalcemia, because of the shortening of the QT interval, may produce ST uh, elevation in the anterior lid, but that's very rarely seen. This is more important. And Brugada, I think everybody can identify it. We should produce a memory uh, template for diagnosing this. If you have a steel elevation in V1, V2, V3, like this shape, it's like the Brugada. We should be careful. We should be taking the family history. We should be asking about the patient has been put north, uh, and should be uh, advising him regarding ICD. WPW. You know, this is important. Sometimes patients are referred to us for angiogram, and finally the patient did not have actually MI. This has, this has, the patient has uh, WPW. And look at this one. You can have a Q wave that suggests the patient have MI to CFF, but the PR interval is too short. And if you look carefully, you will see the delta wave in many days. And this is a beautiful issue. This patient has intermittent WPW. Now look at the STT wave changes. Look at lead one. Second, first and second, the whole complex is quite all right. Then we have high piece of uh, WPW, uh, a pre excitation ECG. And look at the ECG changes, dramatic ECG changes is there. And you are getting two, three FEF showing MI, but it's not MI. And again, it's getting normalized. In the same ECG, you get what Brugada can produce and what actually is not there. So that's a beautiful ECG. It's a mimicker of MI. Technical exocardia. Well, it creates a lot of uh, anxiety among many patients. And you can dramatically cure the patient of the ailment by doing an ECG properly and showing that you do not have any MI at all. Look at this one. Lead one AVL. There is Q wave, Q wave complex. And 
somebody has said you have their mind, now you do need to go uh, angiogram. Now, when you do the proper ECG, you find that the ECG is normal, but she do not need anything. Look at this one. This patient has a dramatic presentation. Do you know why? There is uh, ECG changes in one APL, but look at the anterior list. There's also early repolarization. Somebody was advising the patient, you have serious problem, you have to go to the hospital right now. You are having an MI. The patient has both technical extracardia as well as the early repolarization syndrome has been pushed into, panicked into, uh, thinking that he has a critical coronary artery disease. He doesn't. He has a normal heart. That's very reassuring. We have to know it, identify it, and keep uh, assurance to the patient. This is important. Poor apparel progression in COPD creates some problems. Should we call it MI or should we not? Because the COPD patient usually results from smoking, and that's a very important key factor for ischemic heart disease development. What about that? Well, we can alleviate that problem. By how? Do the ECG again, but now put all the leads one uh, one space down. That means V1, V2, not in 14th interstitial space, but in 50th space, and the rest, 4, 5, 6, V1, V2 in 4th space, and the rest in the, instead of 5th, in the 6th space, one step down, you will get the R wave. If you get the R wave, it's actually the heart is tubular, it's lowered down, you are getting that. The R wave would not have appeared if it had, the patient had MI. The presence of R wave in this that ECG will exclude, can reassure the patient instantaneously. Pacing ECG can mimic MI. Well, this patient has a big spike and everybody almost uh, all medicine specialists also very easily can diagnose that uh, pacing ECG and the MI diagnosis is not there. But if the spikes are small, bipolar leaf, you get LVPP pattern and sometimes that's considered either as LVP or as MI. What about this one? The patient is by pacing. That also shows, look at this, some ischemic pattern which may not be there actually. So just the end, what I want to say is that the ability of an isolated ECG recording to detect ischemia and infarction depends upon the pre-test probability of a patient having coronary artery disease. You do not pay attention that much to a 20-year-old girl coming to you with a specific pinpoint chest pain and T wave infarction V1, E3. But you pay attention to a 60 year old man coming to with you with chest pain, a little bit atypical, but ST in T inversion in V1 to V3. The clinical context is very important. ECT must be correlated with clinical history and physical examination. And remember, it's always useful to compare the present ECT with the previous one. Certain characteristics of the ECT case may aid in the correct diagnosis. ST segment A to a morphology, distribution of changes, ST the QS complex changes, body spectral etc. But ultimately, the most effective way of developing expertise in ECG interpretation is to see plenty of ECG and at the same time be aware of its limitation. I should also say we should be aware of our own limitations. Today, I'll be asking forgiveness from the audience, learned audience, if I make any mistake. Because when I'm reading and going through so many books and articles, I see that I do not know so much things. So many things are there to be learned. Let us, uh, God give us the chance to learn a little bit more during this corner pandemic. And thank you all for patient care. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you again for your nice elaborative presentation.
there are some questions uh, that has been there in question and session. I'd like to request uh, our dear panelists to open their video and also unmute their uh, speaker so that they can contribute to answering their questions. The first question that comes to uh, screen is that, is there any way to know that an ST depression is, which is not due to ischemia? Atar sir. No, I think that we have a lot of আমাদের পরবর্তীতে আমার মনে হচ্ছে ওয়াদ উদ্ভাই যে লেকচারটা দিতে সেখানে আমাদের খুব কমই কোশ্চেন কিন্তু খুব বেশি আছে কারণ ভেরি মানে প্রায় সব কিছু কিন্তু ডিসকাশন হয়ে গেছে সুতরাং আর আমাদের পরবর্তীতে যে সেকেন্ড সেকেন্ড আছে তাতে কিন্তু অনেকগুলো কোশ্চেনই আবার ডিসকাস হবে সুতরাং বুঝেছেন সবগুলো কোশ্চেন তুমি প্রেজেন্ট করো সবগুলো না আমার মনে হয় যে এই কোশ্চেনটার অ্যানসার তুশার যেটা বলল স্যার যে এসটি ডিপ্রেশন ইন এসবিটি ভার্সাস ইসকেমিয়া আমার মনে হয় ওয়াদ উদ্ভাই আপনি আগে অ্যানসার দেন এবং পরে অফিসার কমেন্ট করবেন Uh, actually, I was hoping somebody will be asking this. I didn't put any uh, 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 example in there. In SPT, there is ST depression. And it's been told, most of the time, this is not related to any actual ischemia. And the changes may remain for some time. Even after conversion to sinusoidal, the memory of uh, alternate pathway, the abnormal way the heart was reacting. I think Professor Rafiqsar will be explaining why it is there. Mohsin and Professor Rafiqsar and you yourself, these three are better suited to answer that question. Amar Mohsin, Amar Shudhu Rafiqsar, can you hear me, sir? I mean, ST depression after tachycardia is not uncommon, but it should not last for too long. Yes. But then also, if you look at, we do troponin on patients present with SVT, and sometimes you will find that troponin is elevated, a very marginal elevation. And when you do catheterization on those patients, you don't find any obstructive disease. I think these people probably had small vessel disease, and this happens in patients who are in 45, 50-year age range. SVT, there is some ST depression immediately afterwards and elevated troponin. Uh, so our other issue would be that when the heart is tachycardic, there can be some subendocardial ischemia. So there is no precise explanation. But on the other hand, the memory will apply to scenario where there is white cure as tachycardia. Yes. It's like somebody being paced in the ventricle, and you stop pacing, you will see STT changes. That's due to memory. Thank you. Sir, but uh, there is a question. And if it is due to the rate-related subindicodal ischemia, yeah. but there is some, in case of the AVRT, it is more common than the AVNRT. All the rate is almost similar. Is there any explanation, sir? I mean, if it is narrow QRS tachycardia, it should not make any difference at all. But it can be that if somebody has WPW syndrome and manifest pre-excitation, you can see ST segmentation. That's due to memory because in WPW syndrome with pre-excitation, the activation is like pacing or like ventricular tachycardia. So there will be some memory. And you'll see more ST depression during the tachycardia with narrow QRS. as opposed to avnrt thank you thank you sir anyone can comment mozumdar sir do you want to add something sir actually <laughs> nothing to add actually the thing is that i i just echo the words of dr rafiq bhai the 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 explanation is it will be variable because it, it may be due to the some ischemia that is for the microvascular ischemia or maybe it is related related but think of the exercise exercise test where we increase the heart rate and there is a ST depression and we then level it as the ischemic heart disease so when the svt there is a ST depression and it is due to the rate related is it not the ischemia it, it is only due to the uh, some other things Uh, actually, sir, uh, that's the point Professor was saying. If the age is suggested, the clinical context is much more important. In a hypertensive diabetic patient, if the patient has uh, a 45 no, no. plus, if there is ST depression and the increased heart rate, yeah, and, and, and to compare with the exercise test, 
determine in my in the question of question who has got triplication abdominal cavity sorry is there any what wp wp manifest wp duplication developing mi is there any problem in diagnosing no, mi no, in that patient no, no. so sir those questions are already discussed not uh, as because there are two more session time is short so this is already yes, discussed okay. nicely discussed by the professor wadi okay, that is that is i, I think we should go to roping start session yeah, we are yeah, actually all sir. waiting for yes that. sir yes sir we should uh, rest of the things are almost discussed sir. Sir, so we should uh, sir, no, before, move on to our next session acha to sir sir before before concluding this session our next session will be uh, rupi kamit sir session but before this i have some questions from our student side for the open forum uh, first one is the sir what is the term that is the is there any term recent mi old demi is there any term these are questions with the examination frequent just is there any term what is called the recent term yeah, extensive anterior mi recent mi this term is also extensive anterior mi extensive or not extensive that is not the question but the recent term is term is whether whether any term like this recent term mi mozunda sir huh? <laughs> sir it is no. it is written in question <laughs> channel there is 
uh, no question of producing any disturbance to the repolarization of the part. So repolarization is more effective due to ischemic injury of the part. This is the last uh, question, I think. Uh, Rubik's our final Thank comment you. and then we will conclude this session. No, I think Thank I'm fine now. Everyone. It was nice to see, uh, nice to see Professor Sufia Madam. Assalamu alaikum. And Hello. Professor, yes. Professor Maski, is he still there? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, he's, he's, um, Orun he's, Maski. I, I can please. Please, please uh, unmute and show your video, please. Unmute, please, Orun Maski. Some, yes. Yeah. Some Maske. internet problem here. Yeah. <laughs> Professor <laughs> Maski, welcome yes, to this session. And I, I, I mean, some I been... problems I'm not getting regularly. Okay. I mean, Welcome to the program, and uh, I mean, you. I have been talking to Atahar and Rundu for a long time. We are neighbors, um, Bangladesh and Nepal, and I think we need to collaborate more, and I would hope that you will participate in this program and other programs in Bangladesh. So we, we have, have a lot to, yeah, we have lot to learn from each other, and so we need to you. expand this collaboration. Thank you for joining this session. Thank you, sir. And after the Finally, Vadur Bhai, thank you very much for your excellent lecture. Sir, Amar Manah, Rupi, sir, thank you very much. Sir, I have covered almost all the aspects of ischemic heart disease, if you change this. So, as usual, we'll do some EKGs, and I would like participants to answer, and we'll discuss, we'll make it short, because we have been here for quite some time. And I have one suggestion for future that we keep the whole session within one and a half hour. So that uh, it will be great to yeah. do that. And if necessary, we'll split up our lectures. Um, this, is, this is CG. I just want a quick answer on this ECG. And Sir, can tell me what? Yes, sir. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. As, the, as the session is already quite extended. Yes. So... Uh, Answer is one is giving LDDD. Anything else? Sir, we are demanding that we should go a systematic way. Yes, sir. It is. We are getting the ECG comments. Last 10 seconds. 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and we should stop. Okay. So what is Sorry. the majority diagnosis? Diagnosis or LBV? Majority diagnosis LBV. One LBV pattern ECG. Okay. So the heart rate is one zero three. Um, one one and two mentioned, sir. Around one. Left bundle bunch back, normal PR interval. So it's typical left bundle bunch block. Yes, and so it, it brings me to the next ECG. Um, how about this one? You good? Okay. Uh, there is some change in the ECG morphology. These are not same patient. It's a different patient. Yeah. Yes. LBB with STMI. Exactly, sir. Yes. So, anybody answering this one? LBB with ST elevation MI. Okay, good. So that's good, good. I mean, if you look at lead one, you can see P wave QRS, but in lead V1, it's a little confusing because there are two sinus bits, and then of course there are there two is. premature bits. Yes, so that makes it a little confusing, but if you look at the native QRS, there is ST elevation in lead V2. It's about um, eight, uh, close to eight millimeter ST elevation. And of course, in the lateral lead, in V5, there is um, ST elevation concordance. That fulfills the criteria of left bundle with acute MI. This is always a confusion. 
I mean, we always get ECGs, um, ST elevation, is it MI or not? Of course, please remember the clinical scenario is very important. If somebody came to the hospital with, with toe pain and has ECG left bundle, you are not going to start for acute MI. So this is the clinical scenario is very important in this case. So this is the criteria that Padud gave that ST elevation one millimeter more concordant with QRS, ST depression one millimeter more in discordant, V1, V2, V3, or ST elevation discordant. ST depression concordant and ST elevation discordant. That's important. This is five millimeter. And there is another criteria with a little bit less ST elevation. But if you do that, then you lose the sensitive uh, specificity. So five millimeter makes it very specific than um, less um, ST elevation. Sir, previous ECG, am I permitted uh, to say something? Yeah, That's sure. Previous ECG. Pass when uh, we consider uh, uh, new onset LBB, uh, equal relative to HT elevation MI, new onset LBB, why the question of Garbuza criteria in that case? If you are having acute, acute severe acute chest pain and uh, LB pattern ECG, uh, it's equivalent to uh, HT elevation MI. No, new onset LBB. Sir, yes, sir. In my lecture, I have said specifically, if you can compare with the previous ECG, this is the new onset LBB, you don't have to do anything, it's straightforward, it's take it away. Yeah. But if you do not compare with the previous CCG, you have to use the Garbosa criteria to diagnose acute yeah. MI in the sense of health. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So what about the rhythm? Ravi, sir. Yes. Rhythm, no, what about the rhythm? I think let's leave the rhythm aside today. There is actually. <laughs> I think we should skip the rhythm part today. <laughs> But another criteria is ST elevation, 50% of the S wave. Is that a valid criteria, sir? What do Which one? ST elevation? In case of discordation, 50%. V1, V2, ST elevation, 50% of the S wave, preceding S wave. Is that a valid criteria, sir? It's a kind of original year criteria, but it's a kind of different. It's a kind of what to say, it's a kind of add, but it's a less specific way. There is a term called split modification. Split modification. It has sensitivity bar, but specificity is too common. How about this one? Any comment on this one uh, from the yes, part? Already, already some comments are coming. Okay. <laughs> That diagnosis is quite nice, please, sir. I said, I am a panelist. 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 I very big chapter. Very big. Actually, it should be. Next time, ST elevation actor will be ST depression actor. HTV has been switched to the following. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It should be. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Sir, can you ask uh, the uh, clinical scenario, sir? No, no, is... no. Only for you just see the ECG criteria. Clinical scenario will help guide you. The, like the age, of the, age of the patient? Or... I don't have the age of this patient, but this was a really young person in the 30s yeah. with constant chest pain for more than 24 hours. Sir. Yes, sir. Sir, I, I have seen, seen sir, a good number of Nepali students have participated to answer. I want to, there, I want to request Orur Maski. I want to request Orur Maski to comment on this issue, sir, as because right. there are good number of good number of Nepali students commented on this answer correctly. I have seen, I think yeah. the Orur Maski has taught them correctly. They have answered some Nepali students. Orur Maski. Okay. Most of them pericarditis comment. Yes. Yeah. Good. 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 Yes, yes. So, can you hear us? 
So he has got some, uh, Sam has got some uh, internet connection problem. Okay. That's why so basically, um, diffuse edge elevation all over the place. It's a concave edge elevation. You can see the PR segment depression. PR, PR segment. And then in lead AVR, you can AVR. see some PR elevation with edge depression. So this is very classic for pericarditis. And then the same patient five weeks later, so you can see the ECG has gone back to what it used to be. Uh, and I'm just going to add this criteria that Wadud has already discussed, SK elevation, PR depression, except in AVR and V1, and SK depression in AVR V1. These are the criteria, and you can use other criteria. But most important is the clinical scenario. I think the clinical scenario is very important because if we confuse with acute MI and give heparin to this patient, that can be a major problem. So um, if there is any doubt, it should be uh, clearly ruled out. Pericarditis is important to differentiate from acute myocardial infarction. Um, How about woman? In, in V2, there is the ST elevation is convexity upwards. Right? That's the confusion. Exactly. You are right. <laughs> This, but this is the case of pericarditis. Yes, yeah, but that, that you are right, absolutely. It looks as if, if I showed this lead only, it would have shown up as an uh, acute MI, no question about it. The absence of reciprocal change, uh, is it a very good diagnostic criteria for pericarditis? Very good, very good diagnostic very good. point. But that depends upon which artery is showing ST elevation, because in some of the cases, you do not get reciprocal change. But if you get the reciprocal change, that means it goes more it's very specific, very specific. What am I? If, if you're considering the etiology, is it due to this pericarditis due to MI? No, you cannot say that. Because the STT elevation was limited to only V2. V1 ST depression, V3 uh, uh, not significant. Only single lead, V2 it's only single lead. Okay, but I think Professor Azim made a point, there was a question here. because. Yes. Somebody can come with acute MI and then they can develop yeah. pericarditis with yeah. diffuse yeah. extra elevation. Yeah. And that is a very important clinical scenario that we need to rule out. And other thing is that we, I mean, sometimes these patients end up getting repeat catheterization to make sure there is no block blockage. But the pattern of the chest pain uh, will be something to give us clue that constant chest pain change with position. But even after that, you may end up Repeating cardiac catheterization, make sure that previously angioplastic vessel is still open. Um, but this is an important, I think Professor Azam pointed out a very important issue. Um, I'm going to, this ECG is, I would like participants to answer uh, and then tell me if they think this is myocardial infarction, which vessel is involved. They are part of the answer, please. This is a little confusing ECG because there is PVC by Gemini. Please rem remember that. Um, that will uh, create a little problem in diagnosing, but there are clues in this ECG. This is a patient who presented to hospital with chest pain, 45-year-old male. Uh, we are getting some answers, sir, already. So 30 seconds more for discerning the ECG sure. because it's a bit confusing ECG. So 10 more seconds. I think, sir, we can stop that and okay. start discussing the case. Majority of the participants going for anterior MI involving LAD. Okay. Other I think that's a good answer. It's very confusing because if, if I look at lead V3, minimal ST elevation concave, but in V4, you see it becoming at what would describe hyperacute T wave. It's getting there. So there is, but it is a very confusing ECG. Um, and let's look at the angiogram. So this is the angiogram of this patient. If you can see right coronary artery, it's a small right coronary artery, but in the left, the LAD is um, or, or subtotal occlusion of the LAD. 
So I'm going to have all these ECGs. The reason I'm showing it because I have corresponding angiograms. And I think for the senior um, uh, cardiologist or the mid-level cardiologist, this is not an issue. But I think for the young students, it's important to understand that we are just not making up stories. <laughs> so you all, we all have to just so all these ECGs. So this is um, involvement of the LED. Next one, this one. <laughs> We have 20 seconds for this yes. And again, who is vessel, sir? Uh, yes, ECG diagnosis plus which vessel. Seconds more. Five, four, three, two, one. I think so. We should stop and start discussing the ECG. So, what is the majority diagnosis? Anterior MI, anterior lateral MI, yes. with uh, LED involvement, and one anterior is the technical dextrocardia. Technical dextrocardia, one is here. Okay. Here. Okay, good. I think good. At least one person one person commented on the dextrocardia part, but if we look at lead one, the P wave is inverted. Yes, sir. So this is limb lead reversal. Yes. Plus an acute anterolateral myocardial So the, did they talk about the vessel? They commented on LED, sir. Nothing more. LED. LED. Okay. Yes, so this is the right coronary artery in the LAO view. There is some irregularity. Um, and nothing much. But if you look at the, this view, this is a LAO view for the younger doctors. And so the LAD will be coming towards me. And you can see there is a tight subtotal obstruction. And the second picture is after stent placement. You can see this vessel is open now. All right, sir, thank you. Sir, I'm going to talk about the question, sir. Is a localization paper, sir. This is the ECG and this is the okay, ECG. Sir. Sir. Can we get back to the ECG? That is LED proximal. Uh, look at this one. The ST elevation, there is also minimal ST elevation in V1, but from V2 and Darasta, the ST elevation is there. So, heart septal may or may not be involved, but there are still involved. But is the D1 involved or not? Because one AVL, we cannot be sure. We cannot be sure whether D1 is involved or not. The lesion is before or after that. Otherwise, we could have been able to do that. As a whole, diagnosis right. is correct. So I'll absence, go to the picture. Absence of ST depression in inferior lead indicates that it is, uh, D1 is not involved. But uh, because of the technical estrocardia, you can comment on that. Exactly right. This is you can just comment right. on this. The lead leads are invalid. So what what, what, is, what do you think of the lesion in the angiogram? Uh, sir, S1 is slightly involved. Hmm. Yeah. And that's okay. just very proximal. Sure. Okay. So next one. Still diagonal also involved. Diagonal is also involved. Yes. Sir, again, we give 20 seconds for the ECG. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So, we're not getting the answer. We are getting started getting the answer. ECG. I think if people are more confident about uh, ischemia, they answer more accurately, isn't it? One of the comments while they are answering, I will make that for the younger doctor that acute MI localizes the vessel, but if you do stress test, ST depression is not, that will not localize the vessel. So if you get ST depression in 2, 3 AVF, it doesn't mean that RCA is involved. Um, so that's not very uh, specific, but ST elevation is actually very specific for localization of the vessel involved. Uh, this is very, uh, very important message. 
ST elevation in lead two and lead, uh, uh, lead three and AVF, and also V two V three. So acute uh, inferior and anteroceptral MI with sinus tachycardia. Seems, uh, uh, seems uh, the point is uh, the uh, point uh, is can you have can you have both anteroceptral MI and inferior MI together? अच्छा आमर मुने वधु सही इटा ते आमर मुने जे इटा रियल एक ता इंटरेस्टिंग इसी चीज जे बोथ एंट्री एवं इन्फ्लुएंस दूजा का कैन कैन एक्सप्लेन ना ना तारा का आमर मुने जे मैडम एक रूपी जनता सुनिए अपने एक तू मैडम प्लीज इसी चीज इंटरेस्टिंग मैडम मनी एकूट इन्फ्लुएंस में देखा जाता है आमर uh, well, um, uh, in yeah, the third complex, the uh, left dominant heart comes to the patient. Yes. Uh, the inferior to the body, and the other left complex is dominant. But the act that you explain to us, but the act that you explain to us, it's very difficult, but I'm not going to say that the monotherapy, as I said, first will be left uh, may, uh, dominant. टू Lead three, lead three is more prominent than lead two, so it it can give a clue for right or not being going right. What did our participants think? <laughs> and number. Or the majority goes for right coronary artery. Our okay. participants majority goes for right coronary artery. Another important change. Another important change I want to add is peer treatment depression. Yes, B and A B F, suggesting of atrial infarction. Okay, so let, let's look at it. So this is the left side. I mean, one interesting part, if you look at the circumflex, there is something there, right? This way. But the main lesion was here. And as Wadud said, it's a pro I think that I don't know if the right atrial vessel is involved, but it's probably after the right atrial vessel, right, Wadud? Yeah, yeah. Sir, but the ST elevation in anterior lead actually suggests the RV branches uh, is supplying the anterior wall quite nice. Yeah, and it may yeah. produce yeah. ST elevation in anterior lead in a, a, in a setting of acute inferior mind and confusing us whether the RV or the LED is involved. Yeah. So and this is this is right. Now, what do you say? I mean, can I go back to the ECG, sir? Sir, I'm bothered, sir. Can I go back? Yeah. Okay. Now look at this. ST elevation in two, three appears. The lead three is much more elevated than lead two, so it's RC involved. Is it real? Look at F here. The reciprocal yeah. ST elevation. Yeah. That is a step away. So it is. This is this is actually an RC involvement epidemic drama. Then what about the ST elevation V two, V three? This suggests the proximal RC is involved. And that's why the RP branches may have been very prominent, and they are supplying the anterior wall, and the infarction RP infarction actually produces this ST elevation in V to V3, but that ST elevation is not supposed to happen in V1. Uh, 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 sorry, sub, not supposed to happen in V5 or V4. The ST elevation is limited to up to V3. Uh, most of these criteria are for single artery lesion. Most is of the criteria are single artery. Is it applicable in multi multi disease? Like in this case, there is OM lesion, significant lesion in the OM, total occlusion in the RCA. Does this OM lesion is uh, making any change in the anterior lesion? Yes. Yeah. OM supplies the lateral wall. Lateral wall. Lateral wall. Then lateral wall. you yeah. should then you should look for one AVL and let's say B5, B5 and B6. B5 and B6. There is lateral wall. Lateral wall. B6 should show some changes like ST depression in fashion, which is there. Is chronic ischemia in there? But acute ischemia is uh, ST elevation. Exactly. 
So right, without, thank you, seeing, sir. without seeing an angiogram, uh, final answer is right coronary artery. Yeah. And, and, and actual uh, infection suggests is very principally involved. Yeah, what about, the, what so about this, the elevation in B3? That, that suggests the RV infection sometimes produces ST lesion in anterior valve. टार्मिनोलॉजी Sir, what what should be the terminology? Can I say our both ECG terminology follows and we infer? Na ki our entry may be otherwise explanation dibo. Na entry may be entry may be bolpo na. Chete bolsi sir, chete. I mean, what should I say? Sir, can I can I say something? We do not say LED MI. We say we do not say RCMI. We say anterior wall MI, interior wall MI. Yeah, both the wall are involved. So I should say anterior MI plus interior wall MI. Yes, MI is wall related, and vascular territory we differentiate which vessel is supplying that wall. Okay, let's. I will ask a question to Professor Adud. Uh, let's say I'm the student sitting an exam, and I just say this is acute inferior wall myocardial infarction. Will you let me pass? I do not say anything else. I would ask that he should be giving full answer, like acute ST elevated inferior MI. That ST yes, elevation is something I really want. No, I want to become a consultant cardiologist, and you are the gate to become a consultant. I, I, I will let him pass because the teaching is same. Teaching is same. Thank you. What is important, I think, the students need to understand that if I diagnose acute inferior myocardial infarction, I have saved the patient's life. Yes. Even if I miss some minor things, those are more of academic importance than anything else. But if I miss acute inferior myocardial infarction, I cannot be a consultant cardiologist, and I should not become. As, okay. as long as I do that, and then of course we need to um, uh, go through the academic discussion also, all those discussions that we are doing. Um, and remember, please remember one thing: that our idea if you come back to us after 5 years we may be talking about totally different thing except the acute inferior myocardial infarction that will remain constant all other discussion may change so next one how about this one again patient with chest pain this ecg was done in the field and i think i have another ecg in the hospital so this is the first ecg um severe chest pain uh, i'll read the ecg um it's heart rate 81 um and then pr interval is normal qr is duration normal just and just sir to come started to come and we we'll give 20 seconds to this ecg sure and i'm going to go back we can move back and forth uh, this is the second ecg i think the first ecg is pretty good Can we stick to the first ECG? That will yes. be uh, I'm, I'm sticking easier to the first. So ten more seconds. Five, four. मोस्टिकारी स्टूडेंट 
সার কি এর সাথে বেশি কিছু জানতে চাচ্ছে কেন আমার অফিসার কাছ থেকে শুনি মানে দিয়ে ডিপ্রেশন প্রফেসর অদুল ওয়াজ আই আর সি এন বল ওকে এনিবডি এলস হাউ অ্যাবাউট লিড এর ভি এল এ ভি আর হিয়ার দেয়ার ইজ এ স্টিল ইলেভেশন স্টিল ইলেভেশন রাইট এস স্যার এ স্টিল ইলেভেশন লিড এ ভি আর আই অ্যাকচুয়ালি ওয়াজ উইথ ফার্স্ট showed me one of this ecg in one of the session i really didn't believe him and i said i need to look it and then i pulled up all these ecgs so most answer is in free am i sure that is st depression elevation in 3 and a bf interestingly there is not much st elevation in lead 2 but the important so, is it reciprocal stage that is sir one is okay, sure so this is the ecg right coronary artery um totally occluded so you are right um uh, and uh, so this is rca but there the uh, every other minimal uh, st elevation but so that was not significant enough how about this one sir it is the angiogram of the previous patient sir no this is different this is ecg of a different patient the angiogram of the previous patient was rca So everybody was right. And this is a first is the first one a uh, totally occluded RCA and the second one uh, that is understanding. So this is another ECG. Yes sir. It is new sir it is new. This is new ECG. Yes. This is new. Sir what is the question for this ECG sir? Again same question. Uh, what is the diagnosis and if they think acute if they think myocardial infarction which vessel i think so this is very very interesting for in the setting of intervention cardiologist <laughs> yes i'm ha- i'm glad that i don't have to deal with this patient i will not be very happy thank you <laughs> <laughs> okay still we should more in lead 3 than lead 2 and uh, reciprocal change in 1 and avl ST depression and also I see uh, elevation uh, V5 and V6 V4 yes, as right. well. Uh, so uh, most likely uh, RCA involvement. For the and yes, what the location? Look at V1 V2. Yes. V1 V2 there is ST yes, depression. Yes, V2. Sir, before going to the main discussion, Professor Azum. Sir. ST elevation in V3, V4, V5, V6. How will you explain? V4, V5, V6. Oh, sir, V3 started from V3 to V6. No, V4 and V2. V1, V2, ST depression and V3 to V6, V6. ST elevation. Yes, sir. V3, if we evaluate the first, we look at this 2, 3 AVF. 3 is more RC involvement, no doubt about this. Now in 1 and AVL, ST depression. And V4, 5, 6 is ST elevation. There are some sorts of reciprocal change as evident. There is involvement LED, eh, sorry, RCA and LCX involvement is, it is, whatever the dominancy, RCA and LCX, both vessels are involved in there. No, which vessel is occluded? If the patient undergoes the primary PCI, who should be the target vessel for you, LCX or RCA? Yes. Okay. In this scenario, we should, we, uh, in the aim of primary PCI, I should go first to the RCA first. Just take a short, if it is total occlusion, then I go for another short with the left system, if it is LCX also disease, but I intervene from the RCA first. Can I, I can can I, yeah, put they it are also first, first degree, it is wrong. First degree, it is wrong also. Can I, I want to put the situation because lead 2, lead 3, if you look at this, there are the more elevation in lead 3. This favor RC involvement. And 1, AVL and B5, B6 also gives a clue for L6 involvement. But... Conduction defect, yeah. Dominant LCX occlusion. Leading to anterior MI, posterior MI, conduction defect. Can you say something? 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 Can you say
in mm-hmm. lead V1, it is biphasic, and all the other lead is positive. So it is unlikely to be a right-sided lead. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. But very, very nice good. differential diagnosis. Thank you for your comment. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good. This is Thank also you. interesting. This next, next ECG, this one. Um, this is a patient, 83-year-old male with chest pain. Oh, yes. Giving thirty more seconds to answer, and we're getting some answers. Still not getting, giving good answers. Hmm. Apna class puru puri karak kaise lagte ho, Dubai? Na, ora niche rahi pare. Ek lar puri khay diye na. But that's what you should put in the exam. When we that's teach right. something, yeah. and we should ask them to questions they can answer and we expect them to answer. Right. And, right. and if they if they do the baseline standard, they are good to be consulted in cardiology. Yes. Ten more seconds. I think we should get one participant to them. They have danced the very nicely. Nepal, we should get yes, somebody from we should, Nepal. Uh, Nepal. We should stop, please. Hey. Sir, please request someone. Can you call uh, Dr. Dhriti Das? D A I R I T A. Dhriti Das, can you call her? Give me one minute. Hey, Asal Bhai. You are not a good person. I mean, while she is getting it, I mean, this is an interesting ECG. If somebody gave this ECG to me without describing any clinical scenario, a lot of us may not even pay much attention to what's going on to this ECG. I think that's why uh, the clinical scenario of patient is so important that you somebody is having severe chest pain and an sir, ECG like sir, this. Sir, okay. hey, this is the Dower Pore, what history you should take this patient? What mandatory history you should take the patient? Can I tell something about this ECG? Can I tell? Let's no, talk about it. You are not supposed to tell the participant first. Later on, later on. No, no, no. 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 No, this LM is not actually left main. Left main not the diagnosis. Left main is the underlying cause, the etiology. Yes, this is maybe, a maybe case. not maybe. It is one of the important cause, yeah. maybe. No, no. In okay. Re- 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 you have to you have to you have to, you have to formulate first differential diagnosis. Yeah, Doctor Dhriti Das. Is this Can you uh, can do you understand uh, Bengali? No, no, no Bengali, English. No English Bengali. Okay. So, uh, uh, what is your diagnosis from this disease? This is, this is, this is on the screen. What is your di- what was the, your diagnosis? Um, ventricular ectopic with lateral ischemia. Okay. Ventricular ventricular with lateral ischemia. Sir? Okay. That's good. Why do you think it's later, that is lateral ischemia? Um, uh, um, B5A, uh, B5A, uh, ST depression. Okay, sure. So that is ST depression in before B5B6. Um, as and, well as, and anybody else, anything else, anybody else answered? 
anything so, global sd depression almost global sd depression uh, uh, many people have said let me मध्य पीभिसी and there is also st depression one fvl fvl also in the in uh, 4 5 6 in 4 5 6 that means five already and there's also st depression in slightly in lip 3 and fvf st elevation in fvr and v1 v1 slightly all these suggest in the clinical context suggest this patient has कॉल्सल्ट टीचिंग परीक्षा टेबिल हो ले तो माने माने व्हाट इज योर एक्सपेक्टेशन फ्रॉम द स्टूडेंट साइड दे व्हाट हमारे स्टूडेंट से के हमारे फाइनलिस्ट हो जो साइनस टेक के लिए पीवीसी व्हाट व्हाट इज स्पेल्ड एविडेंस ऑफ इस्कीमिया मोर पॉइंटिंग मे बी इट इज ड्यू टू लेफ्ट पेन डिजीज और प्रोजिमल एलई डिजीज और डिफ्यूज ट्रिपल वेसल डिजीज एटा हम हम जानते चाहिए मेडिकल इमार्जेंसिंग If not feasible, you have to do something better. You can go for thrombolysis. Sir, thrombolysis is not recommendation. Sir, yes, you should take care. You should take care of the clinical context always. Because it's a case by case. In this scenario, patient came to uh, definitely come to you with severe chest pain or severe unstable angina may present, but single lead ST elevation in AVR, we cannot. Go for decision for thrombolysis. Rather, we can go for early primary PCI strategy. We can go or early invasive strategy. We can go if it is supported by ECG evidence as as you have. If yeah. you don't have the uh, troponin, then you consider early invasive strategy in the form of revascularization. Then, if you okay. find the left vein disease, critical left vein disease, if it is possible to treat in two to five minutes, then you go for that. If it is not, then you can consider for revascularization in the form of CBC. I think in this way we can approach this question for this question. Professor, I will try to share with you. No, no, our sir, our man, double vessel disease, double vessel disease. I have not told you just now, sir. Sir, double vessel disease, I have not told you, madam. 
বলতে ডিফারেন্সিয়াল আর যদি ওয়ার্ড স্পিড এসটি ডিপ্রেশন থাকে যদি ওয়ান এভিএল বি ফোর বি ফাইভ বি সিক্স অথবা গ্লোবাল এসটি ডিপ্রেশন মোর দেন টুয়েলভ কিলোমিটার হয় তাহলে আমাকে চিন্তা করতে হবে মে বি ট্রিপল ভেসেল ডিজিজ বাট আই এম নট শিওর ইট মে গিভস ইউ ক্লু বাট ইট ইজ এনজিওগ্রাফি ক্যান গিভ ইউ রাইট আনসার যে হোয়াট ইজ ইউর এক্সপেকটেশন এন্ড হোয়াট ইজ ইউর ফাইন্ডিং ভিআর global ht depression v1 ht elevation avr ht elevation and avr ht elevation in avr and uh, more than the v1 so if we tell it that the diagnosis that the, it is the late suggestive of the leg pain disease is there any wrong no 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 he's very right no wrong no wrong exactly no wrong we need more uh, uh, much more information from this correlate with the uh, uh, coronary angiogram eta sir horrible answer hoye geche mane eto was it sundar thakle holo I think I'm going to wrap up this. I, I, I will echo the Professor Azam's description that when we are describing ECG, we are describing ECG. Right, and then the, finally, we, we should describe the ECG as Professor Azam said, that sinus tachycardia, there is ST depression in such and such lead, there is ST elevation, and then put a final conclusion that suspect. Now, if you see this ECG in the ECG room, what we will do because we sit in the ecg room or in our office and we are reading ecg as they are being done i will make sure that i call the emergency room and find out what's happening with that patient any acute ecg change when we read it we immediately make phone call that where is this patient because in the emergency room they may have missed this ecg they may miss this ecg because this ecg is not a terrible ecg if you look at without chest pain So please remember that that please don't ignore so this is the left main uh, what do you think of the rca what do then azam it depends on the disease probably non dominant non dominant probably okay. so probably right. non dominant and it But is disease. subtotal occlusion also there evidence is there yeah yeah okay you sometimes wonder if you look at this kind of angiogram how these patients are surviving বাবা তোমার হৃৎপিণ্ডটা পাক্কা আমের মতো ঝুলতে আছে একটু বাতাস লাগলে একটু পুশ করে পড়ে যাবে এইরকম মিসিজি দেখলে মনে হয় যে সত্যি ছুটি দিয়ে দিছে ডায়াগনোসিস করে তারপরে স্যার আমি যেটা দেখলাম একদম ক্লাসিক্যালি যাকে বলে যে একদম ক্লাসিক্যালি এলএডি আর Sometimes this is a very, very important clue that we have to do with the subsequent step of the key. 
আমি স্যারকে অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ দিই আমি ভাবতাম যে হয়তো ইস্যুটা আসাতে আমি মনে পড়ছে কি রুগীটাতে ভর্তি দিলাম লিখে তো দিয়ে যে আজকে মিলে গেল আর কি থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ ভেরি মাচ স্যার ওকে আই থিং দিস উইল বি দ্য লাস্ট ইসিজি দিস ওয়ান 69 ইয়ার ওল্ড মেল উইথ চেস্ট পেইন কোশ্চেন স্যার আগেন অনেকে ভালো লিখতেছে কই তুষার তুমি কোথায় একটু বলো আমাদের একটু বলো হ্যাঁ নাই লেটমেন ডিজিজ উইথ লো অ্যাট্রিয়াল রিদম ভিউনি <laughs> I think the ECG was, I'm glad that everybody noticed that the actual rhythm. It yes, is not sir. sinus rhythm. If you look at lead V5, V6, V4, P wave is negative. So, and 2, 3 AVF P waves. I think we can call it left actual rhythm. But if somebody yes, tells me this is low actual rhythm, I'm happy with that. But to be more specific, I think this is a left actual rhythm. And, of course, everybody has described that there is actually depression in V4, V5, V6. Um, lead 2 AVF and maybe in lead 3 and there is ST elevation in lead um, AVR and small ST elevation. So in this case, ST elevation is more in AVR than V1. So any comment on that? What do you think? Left pin. Left okay. pin is much more important. Okay. So let's, shall we look at the angiogram? Yes, yeah, sir. So this is the um, right coronary artery. Huge <laughs> big right coronary artery. This is interesting because if you look at this one, it's not left main, but it's left main equivalent. Yeah, Cosmal LCF, Cosmal LED. LED. So this is uh, what it was. I think we should, we should stop it here. Sir, 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 I'm just trying to comment on this. Yes. I'm just trying to see it, but I'm going to write a paper on this. I'm going to put this as a short letment. Letment is short. Then yeah. this kind of the ECG, ABR, that may mimic the uh, first type of HT synthesis in ABR. Man, those who have got the short, short latement. When they are RCA deletion, but plus latement is short. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you very much. The first time I was going to talk to you, the hyper-acute, the recent time, the hyper-acute, the tall, tall, T, big, T, wave, the hyper-acute, এটা কি আমরা বলতে পারবো বা ইয়েতে স্টুডেন্টদের কাছ থেকে এটা কি আমরা ই করতে পারবো ইফ ইউ গিভ দা ক্লিনিক্যাল সিনারিও দে শুড ডায়াগনোস ইট প্রপারলি বাট উই हैव टू प्रोवाइड अ क्लिनिकल सिनेरियो ফর ক্লিনিক্যালি আচ্ছা আমার মনে হয় যে স্যার এর স্ক্রিনশটটা অফ করলে হ্যাঁ ফিউচার দেখেন স্যার আমার মনে হয় যে মানে আজকে লম্বা সেশন ওয়াদুদ ভাই কে মেনি 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 থ্যাঙ্কস এবং আপনার লেকচারতে হয়তো এজ ইট ওয়াজ রিয়েলি ইউজফুল সেটা প্রমাণ পাওয়া গেছে এজ মোস্ট অফ আওয়ার পার্টিসিপেন্ট কারেক্টলি অ্যান্সার টু অল অফ দ্য ট্রিকি ইসিজি শোর বাই দ্য রফিক আহমেদ স্যার সো থ্যাংক ইউ এগেইন প্রফেসর ওয়াদুদ ভাই যে ইউ হ্যাভ রেপ এ ভেরি বিগ চ্যাপ্টার ইন এ সিঙ্গেল সেশন দ্যাটস ওয়াজ দ্য রিজন যে ইউর লেকচার ওয়াজ লং বাট ইট ইউ কভার অল দ্য থিংস we have learned a lot of things from your ecg and another announcement for our participants that in our coming two uh, 
day that is the two saturdays coming saturday and next saturday our speaker will be rofi ahmed sir that is the next speaker our two session that is the uh, sir saturday next and uh, two consecutive saturdays we have got two lectures sir mechanism of arithmetic and the atrial as well rofi ahmed sir so this is a big announcement for our participant that is the rofi ahmed sir acha we actually uh, mahabur rahman babu you are still here Yes, sir. Sorry, sorry, Mahar Babu. Actually, we missed you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, to Babu, Mahar uh, uh, Babu. Sir, Wadud sir is always a good uh, man and good. Uh, it's everybody is always very, very nice and it's very, very beneficial to our uh, fellows and. Your team is very rich, sir. You, Rafiq uh, Ahmed sir, and Wadud sir. It's a very, many rich platform. So every student must be benefited from this platform. And you are doing well, sir. You are as an organizer. Not only Wadud sir, also Rafiq sir, and you all are good, and you are doing good, sir. And best of luck, sir. You will go and continue this. Actually, thank you. Uh, thank there you. was another yeah. segment of today's, but we will actually not uh, show it. That is uh, because of the long session today. And finally, we are very, very uh, grateful to our Professor Abdullah Al Shabi Mozumdar sir, as because he is still with us for a long time. And Professor Shufi Arhan, madam, I don't know uh, uh, what has came in. Actually, we are very much grateful to madam, as because he was whole session with us and participated in our discussion. And also Professor Mohsin Hussain, Mahmud Al Firoz, and Khalid Al Shabi. Actually, there Kanis Patel, Kanis Patel, Professor Kanis Patel. Actually, uh, we did not uh, to comment from her and Dr. Uh, Gobindo Pal. Everybody was very much energetic and very much interested to comment in this session. And we will expect that in our next session, Dr. Rofi Kamal third session, sir, Saturday and uh, next Saturday. Actually, we expect everybody to this. Timing, sir. 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 Timing, That is ECG of the week. I will not show, show it today, but I like to congratulate Dr. Mosadikul Alam, who rightly answered to this question. That is ECG of the week, Dr. Mosadikul Alam. I I I think you are in the screen, and congratulations to Dr. Mosadikul Alam for your answer to the that is the ECG of the week that was uh, actually displayed in the uh, ECG Facebook of the ECG Study Group's Facebook. So I will not discuss Kanish that. Kanish case, to comment quickly. No, hello, physical care okay. medicine. And Dr. Kanish Fatima, actually we are very much sorry that we did not actually uh, call you to for active participation, but we are very much delighted and grateful for your participation. And I think you will uh, actually continue your uh, participation, and you will actually encourage your students to participate in this session. And I think uh, you will be very much uh, efficient person to comment. Do you want to comment something from your teacher, that is Professor Wadud Blekar? Dr. Kanish Fatima, are you here, Dr. Kanish Fatima? Unmute, cut away. Dr. Kanish Fatima, unmute, please. Can you tell it there? And I think he shares that. So, what is that? I I think she is not. What is that? You are concluding remarks. So well, I am really grateful. I don't want to say anything else. We have tolerated this for a long, long period. And that's good enough for me. And the ACP uh, Rafiq sir has shown is so parted into the lectures. It's so it's good for understanding the, what is there and what we should do, how we should approach. And sir is teaching two things: both the ACP and what a teacher should do. One comment of his is very important. We should put something in the exam. What he have taught them and is really important for saving a life. Only academic thing of critical importance, only academically, is not that important to make a cardiology consultant. We should be paying attention to their fact. And teachers like Professor Mohsudha Sir, Professor Sukhya Rahman, Rafiq Sir, all the teachers they have taught us, and we should be. Teaching our juniors like that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, Bexim. Assalamualaikum. Good night. Assalamualaikum. Have a good night. Assalamualaikum.